Hi and welcome to High School Physics Explained and I'm Paul. I'm Simon. I'm Tom. Today we're going to be looking at the photoelectric effect. And the photoelectric effect, if you watch my video, is all about showing the particle nature of light. That is, light travels in discrete packets called quanta and that is determined by e equals hf. But it has a little bit of history and I'll let Simon explain. We originally had the wave model of light, and that was great. That explained the whole heap of phenomena like reflection, refraction, diffraction. But then we started to get some data, um, and we had these kind of like profiles that we gained from stars in terms of their spectra uh, that had a bit of a hump in them. But they didn't actually match up with the, um, the model that we had with the Rayleigh genes law. So that suggested something called the ultraviolet catastrophe, that basically as uh, wavelengths got shorter, they would just tend to essentially infinite intensities, which is physically impossible. So Max Planck came up with um, an explanation, that, well, a bit of a fix, more to the point, uh, mathematically, um, the idea that light was quantized, that we had particles, and that explains this kind of black body curve. But we didn't really have a model, a theory to back that up. We just had that mathematical fix. And then a little bit later, we had Philip Leonard. Now, Philip Leonard was also examining the photoelectric effect, and he changed the intensity of the light falling on the photocell. And he was predicting that if you change the intensity, then the amount of uh, energy uh, increased. But what happened is that that didn't change at all. What happened was is that it may have changed the current, but the, intens the intensity did nothing to the amount of energy, which is he measured looking at the stopping voltage. Along came Einstein, who demonstrated really that light has particulate nature. That is, is if, if you want to increase the kinetic energy of your electrons, you need to increase the frequency, not the intensity. And all intensity does is it changes the amount of electrons actually being emitted, in other words, the current. So what we have here is a demonstration of the photoelectric effect. And I'm going to hand over to Tom, who's going to explain the setup and show how we can use this to collect some really good data to demonstrate the photoelectric effect. Tom? So this is our setup. I've got a mercury lamp in a tall black box with some heat diffusers around here because it gets quite hot. The mercury light is coming out of the collimator nice and straight into the diffraction grating here which sends the uh, mercury light into its component colours to the detector here. Inside this detector is a photodiode that when it's hit by light it creates a current. There's also another circuit in that box that matches that current in the opposite direction so that the current stops. This is called the stopping voltage. Essentially what we're measuring is the amount of energy of mercury light in volts and you can see the voltage on the multimeter here that's what we'll be measuring so Tom before we start I guess what we need to do is we need to calibrate it don't we yeah correct so for, for good measurement data we need to make sure that the the thing we're measuring is actually what we're measuring okay so that really that improves its validity you don't want any uh, sort of data that is skewed in terms of the results that you're going to get so hey Tom how about you take us through the calibration process sure no worries so the calibration happens at this end here this is where the the lights coming in right now you can see the light coming straight into that detector hole that's where the lights going in to calibrate that I'm going to open this up and hopefully you can see the light is going straight into the detector right now. If I was to move this off to the side, you can see the light's not going in anymore. Now the light's going straight into that detector. That's what we want. We want the light to be hitting directly on. That's good. So we're going to close that up to block any light out. I also want to calibrate the, the detector. So I'm going to uh, put my finger over here so no light's getting in. I'm just going to press the zero button and that makes sure that everything I'm measuring is the actual thing that I want to be measuring, not anything else that's around. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change these settings and we're going to record the voltage that is going to be reading for the different colours of light that we have there. And we're going to use that data and produce a, and get a spreadsheet which is going to be, that, that Tom's already produced, to show how we demonstrate the photoelectric effect. So because the light, the mercury light, is coming into this diffraction grating and the light is spreading out into component colours, the first one here is here and the others are off at different angles. So to capture those we're going to swing this arm around and you'll see the different colours of the mercury light. The first one is yellow, so we're actually measuring now the energy in volts 
of the yellow light going into the photodiode. But because there's lots of light around, mostly yellow and green and red, we need to filter out all of the other stuff except for yellow. So I can do that with the yellow filter there. What we've got here is a, a value of 0.7 volts, and that's measuring the energy in volts, which is, in this case, is work per unit charge for that color. So now I'm going to remove that filter and move across to the next color, which is green. Now, like I said before, there's lots of yellow and green and red light around, so I'm going to put the green filter on, and that's reading 0.79. So you can see the different color is giving us a different value. Now we're going to move along to the next one, which is blue. There's the blue one. The blue one is reading 1.4. Blue one is reading 1.4 volts. And we're going to mark these values down and put them into a prepared spreadsheet from, uh, that Paul was mentioning earlier. Move it again off to the violet, and that's measuring... 1.59. It's measuring 1.59 for the violet. Now you'll notice I don't have a filter on here. While there is blue and violet uh, light around, there's not a lot. There's not a lot that's going to interrupt our measurements. So it's okay that we don't use a filter here. And now off to the ultraviolet, which is there, and we're measuring 1.87. With the, with the ultraviolet, we're measuring 1.87 volts. So uh, what can we do with this data, Tom? So what I'll do is I'll collect the data we've just got here and put it into a spreadsheet that I've created that also has uh, some data from a couple of years' worth of students uh, doing this experiment. And what we can do is have a look at the, the way that the photoelectric effect behaves uh, with our data and with prepared students' data uh, to get a really good understanding of how the photoelectric effect works. Fantastic. So let's analyse it. Let's analyse it. So here I have an Excel spreadsheet which shows us the data that we collected in our experiment, which is in this column here. But what I've also got here is data that's been collected at the University of Sydney Kickstart program, and that's data over the last couple of years. So what we have here is the stopping voltage average for all this data here, where I have the frequencies in the first column, and I have my stopping voltage in the second column in terms of volts. So this is my independent variable and this is my going to be my dependent variable. But my dependent variable is in volts and volts of course is equal to the energy per unit charge. Now interestingly enough we can also think about of this in terms of electron volts which is the amount of energy that an electron has when it's passed across a difference of one volt. So the voltage and the energy unit that we often refer to in terms of electrons, although it's not the SI unit there, is the electron volt. That's why the electron volt is there as well. But it's not helpful at this stage because what we want to do is graph the energy, the total energy with respect to the frequency. So to do that, we just need to convert our column here so that we have the energy value here. So we know, if you've watched my video on the photoelectric effect, you know that the amount of energy we have in terms of kinetic energy is equal to the photon energy, which is HF, minus the work function. And the work function is the minimum energy required for the electrons to leave the surface as, as, light, as, as photonic light hits it. So if you look at this, we clearly see we have a linear graph. We have our energy, which is our column right there, and we have our frequency, which is our column right there. So what type of graph would you get when you graph this? Well, let's have a look at the graph. So here is my graph of the data that we collected, and it's a linear graph. And it's linear because it's in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. So let's examine this closely. Our y is the energy. And you can see here as my frequency increases, so does the energy that we have of our electrons. And therefore, so does the stopping voltage in order to compensate if we want to actually stop it. If we look at the second part here, hf, you'll see that F, of course, is our x-axis, our independent variable, and our M is H. And what is H? H is Planck's constant. So if you look here at the formula, our formula says our gradient is 6e negative 34. Now that's pretty close 
considering this is representing the data that we collected of Planck's constant, which is 6.626 by 10 to the power of negative 34. So a pretty good result here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this line through the X axis and onto the Y axis. So here's my line and I'm going to extend this all the way through like so. Now, what does that tell us? Well, first and foremost, it crosses here at this frequency. What does that frequency represent? At this frequency, we have what we refer to as our threshold frequency, and that is the minimum requirement energy for electrons to be emitted. In other words, you can't, of course, get negative energy. So in terms of our energy of our electrons, zero at this particular point in time, this is going to be our, st our energy that is called the work function, and that is equal to H F naught. Now, if I extend the graph to this point, this point is actually what we refer to as the stopping voltage. So if you want to look at the formula over here, F is equal to zero, then our energy is negative phi, our stopping voltage here. So this is our y-intercept, which represents the same stopping voltage. So this value here is equal to this value here. So our data here clearly demonstrates this particular formula, and that is the photonic nature or particle-like nature of light. That light strikes a surface, and as the surface absorbs the photon's energy, as long as the minimum frequency is met, then the photon will cause an electron to be emitted and therefore have some energy. Below this particular value, of course, the electrons will not be emitted and the photon will simply be absorbed by the material and as a result, that energy gets converted to heat. Okay, so then going back historically, you know, what does this data mean? Um, so what we found is when we go to those short wavelengths as we move into the violets and beyond, um, so we can actually get a photocurrent and with increasing frequencies, we actually have increasing stopping voltages. There's greater energy there as related by E equals HF. Increasing the intensity will only increase the photocurrents if we've overcome the work functions of the metals. So going into the violets, you know, that happens you know, most of the time. But as we reduce the frequencies, as Tom was alluding to earlier, um, below a minimum threshold uh, frequency, you won't get any photocurrents. So this only works with the particle nature of light, as determined by Einstein from all of the data. This was a big leap within physics to move beyond just simply the wave model of light. That's fantastic. So hopefully with my previous video on the photoelectric effect and this clear great demonstration with data collected, you have a better understanding of the photoelectric effect. I'm Paul. I'm Tom. I'm Simon. And thank you for watching. Bye for now. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Please remember, like, share, and subscribe. And by the way, drop a comment down below if the video particularly has been useful. And finally, consider supporting me via Patreon. The idea is to develop resources and equipment to continue to teach physics at a high school level. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.